And so the last two years of high school, uh, you know, quitting basketball ended up being the best decision I ever made because I got involved in community service. I have a club called Juniors for Seniors where we do um, different outings and activities with the elderly. And that's just something that I love. I love it. I'm so, I, I spend a lot of time on it, but it doesn't feel like work. Savannah Wen. Um, I am a graduate of La Cunada High School, class of 2020. And in the fall, I don't know if you can like read the hoodie, but <laughs> we I'm can see be, that. Yeah, I'm going to be going to Duke University, um, which is my dream school. I'm going to be studying history there, and also hopefully pursuing a minor in Spanish. What would be maybe the best piece of advice that you received just as a young Savannah growing up that you kind of latched onto? And I ask you this because I know that both of your parents are educators. And so you kind of grew up in this realm of reading and kind of just being very book savvy, but kind of just give us the, the best piece of advice that you received growing up. Um, I think overall, if I had to pick one thing, it would just be, don't be too proud to ask for help. Like you're not above asking for help. For example, um, in my junior year, I really started to struggle with math and, um, for a long time, I resisted the idea of getting any outside help. And while I could have gotten, you know, I could have gotten a B probably by myself, it just, it would have been so much extra work and stress that I didn't really need to take on. And um, I sought out a tutor and that really helped me understand because I felt like in class there were some points that I was missing. And just if you have a tutor accessible to you or you have other online resources that um, you can use to your advantage. Don't think that um, it makes you any less smart or that you're, you know, above needing help because it's really not something to be embarrassed about. And for me, it applied to school, but also, you know, personal issues. If you are really stressed and you need someone to talk to, it's always okay to seek out help. Can you tell us a little bit about what were your activities that really kept you motivated throughout high school? Like, what did you do just outside the class? Um, so this is actually interesting. Um, my freshman and sophomore year, I was really invested in my school's uh, um, basketball team. Sophomore year, I played varsity. And this just took up a colossal amount of time, like probably um, like 20 plus hours a week between practices, games, um, tournaments, things like that. And there was definitely a point in my sophomore year where I realized it really was not making me happy anymore. I felt like unfulfilled. I, I only had time for school basketball and like sleep and sometimes not. <laughs> so um, I made the really difficult decision after investing, you know, so much time and energy into it that I wanted to quit and pursue something else that I was more interested in. And so the last two years of high school, uh, you know, quitting basketball ended up being the best decision I ever made because I got involved in community service. I have a club called Juniors for Seniors where we do um, different outings and activities with the elderly. And that's just something that I love. I love it. I'm so, I, I spend a lot of time on it, but it doesn't feel like work. Um, and I just know I wouldn't have had that chance if I had stuck with basketball. And I was able to grow that into something that won my school's community service award. And um, I made really important connections with people in my community. Um, another thing that I did was youth in government. And I think that really helped shape the last two years of high school and gave me um, a real interest in like civic participation and politics because we got to travel to the Capitol and you know see the governor and the secretary of state speak. And those are just such unique, awesome experiences. And I mean, those are my, I also did martial arts, but those are all things that I would not have been able to pursue had I not had the, um, I guess, the insight that I needed to drop something that was making me unhappy. So um, I, I actually, I was reading this book about college way back when I was a freshman or a sophomore, and it was talking about picking like, um, for your extracurriculars, you should pick something that you would want to spend your Saturday morning doing, right? And for me, that was going into a senior home and talking to, you know, like Terry and Dolores. And if you find something like that, 
that's what you should be investing your time into, something that you'll enjoy doing outside of school. I think that's beautiful advice and that actually sums, sums it up perfectly because I think a lot of students just do all these extra things just to kind of pad their stats for application season and I mean you're obviously proof that it doesn't really work that way. Can you share with us, so you got into the schools, You, um, I remember you went on interviews for the large scholarships at uh, one of your schools and then at the end of the day you chose Duke. Um, can you walk us through kind of that thought process and what made you kind of decide that that was your place that you wanted to begin your higher education? Just tell us about that. Um, so I visited Duke last August and I totally fell in love, you know, like it sounds super cliche, but <laughs> I met the students, I saw these gorgeous buildings and I learned about um, campus culture and I love that of course but I don't think it's wise to make a college decision just off of the like wow you know first impression um, so I think what it really came down to for me it was between Duke and UCLA and obviously two very different schools but um, I just felt like the quality of education that I would get at Duke just like no other school I applied to could really come close to it. They were talking about different things. They have this focus program, which is really unique, um, which is interdisciplinary, and it's like a living learning community. They have this uh, opportunity called FLUNCH, which is short for faculty lunch, and the school will pay for you to take a professor out to lunch and get to know them better. And, you know, just, I would not have had the opportunity to build those kinds of relationships with my professors at UCLA. and. Um, yeah, I just, I think I'm going to have some awesome opportunities and I loved how people seemed really, I mean, obviously intelligent and hardworking, but I didn't get the impression that they were really full of themselves. Like I got a really down to earth vibe. So yeah, that's why I picked you. Um, if you can maybe attribute something to your application, your essays that really helped you stand out and maybe perhaps got you admitted to these schools? Can you maybe point to something that you feel kind of took you over to the success category? Um, well, I did definitely start early. I didn't, um, I know a lot of people waited until September, October to really get started, but I wrote my Common App in the summer before my senior year and that left the next six months pretty much open to me to work on really specializing my supplementary essays. So I ended up, because I started early, I had the time to really make sure that each of the supplementals applied to the specific schools. So they could see, um, you know, that I'd researched their programs and that I was genuinely interested. I didn't have to do a bunch of like copy pasting where, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I think that definitely helped um, and the way I had things scheduled out I was able to finish my college apps process before final season started so it had avoided like that horrible like <laughs> collision yeah. my common app topic it was about my heritage being Armenian American and it was just a very like authentic topic to me and it wasn't I think there's this pressure to be I don't know, like write some kind of really profound, like maybe a sob story or something tragic. And I mean, I'm, I'm blessed enough that I don't really have anything like that to write, but I just wrote something that I felt was an honest representation of who I was. I didn't try and like embellish things. And I guess that um, that spoke to the admissions officers. And you're, to me, one of the things that make you such a standout student is that you are super involved but you're also able to maintain really good grades. So from the academic standpoint, but plus, you know, work-life balance to a certain degree, you're really good at that. Plus you read a ton of stuff just on your own for pleasure. Um, any advice that you can give to other students who want to maybe achieve some of that success or things that you maybe could tell a student who's two years younger than you that wants to achieve the same type of goal that, that you have just achieved? Um. I think it's never too late to start with new activities. Um, you know, just, you can try your hand at a lot of different things and find something that you enjoy. Um, of course, reading and writing is great. I 
really find inspiration from books. And um, if you can, if you have the time, maybe even just one book a month, that will make your life better, I think. And I don't know, at the end of the day, I think there's kind of three things that you need to have to have a balanced life. And that is um, healthy-ish eating habits, exercise and sleep. And if one of those kind of starts to suffer, then everything starts to suffer. So um, I don't know, just make sure that, that it, it does not matter if you have perfect grades if you're getting four hours of sleep a night because that's unsustainable there's gonna be a time where you just like cannot keep going and you'll burn out so your health and your happiness always come first um, you no grade is worth sacrificing your well-being so just keep that in mind and ultimately if you're staying you know physically and mentally healthy that's gonna that can only help your grades so um, don't, don't kill yourself over this. You know, you can do it. I think that's such sound advice, Savannah. And I like how you prefaced it with healthy-ish food. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's a good advice. Treat yourself too. What is one thing growing up in your household at a very young age that was taught to you, something that you latched onto that you feel was something that propelled you into becoming the person who you are today? Um, I was definitely exposed to, um, I guess growing up in a bicultural household, I mentioned, you know, my dad's American and my mom's Armenian. That really taught me the value of learning about different languages and cultures. And that's something that I continued in high school with French and Spanish. And also I was lucky enough to get to travel a lot and learn about new ways of life. And, um, you know, the value of connecting with other people who are different than me. And I think I've carried that through the rest of my life, definitely. Is there something that maybe you could point to that, you know, as you were going through this process, you think was meaningful in your pursuit of the application process? Um, I think Rob's help on my essays was definitely important um, and it's not, it wasn't directly like, he wasn't giving me like word choices, like, oh, maybe this would flow better. But he did help me express the parts of myself authentically um, that I felt that I wanted to express. Or maybe if I was a little bit off topic, he would show me, you know, maybe you could direct it in this way or showcase this part of yourself. Um, I was as successful as I was because I had that kind of guidance and um, I felt supported within the process like because just by the nature of you know public high schools there's only one counselor to you know maybe a hundred or more kids and so it was really nice to have someone who I knew was like looking out for me both you and Rob to we're trying to help me get to my goals in higher education. So yeah, <laughs> I appreciate that. I think, okay, one more thing, actually, I wrote this one down. Um, it's always good in high school to make connections with your teachers. And I know make connections is kind of a vague term. So what I mean by that is maybe if you read a news article that connects to something you learned in class, you can bring it up and they'll see that you're willing to put in the extra effort. and. Um, maybe ask them questions, don't be shy, you know, and show them that you care about what they're teaching. And that will help you because they'll get to learn who you are and that will shine through if they write letters of recommendation. Because I definitely credit some of my acceptances to my teachers. I absolutely adored some of them in high school. And um, I mean, obviously you can never read the letters of recommendation, like once they're sent but I, I know that they probably helped me out a lot. And so don't be shy, you know, your teachers are great. Wonderful advice. Um, Savannah, I'm so happy that you are ending up in a place where you feel will fulfill your educational goals. And I'm hoping we're gonna have another conversation in a few years to see what lies ahead of you and once you're graduating from Duke and uh, 
uh, see what kind of job prospects line up for you. Um, thank, thank you so much for being an inspiration for others and for um, sharing your story. Of course, thank you so much.